Good morning. So far. It's <laughs> Saturday morning once again. <laughs> and you're listening to Common Sense on News Talk 103.3 WEZS. My name's Paul Hofgarten along with Mark Abair. Today we have Skip Murphy and Jane Cormier, and we're going to talk about Citizens for Belknap, and I have a feeling other things politic today. So you want to stay tuned in. You can join in the conversation at 603-524-6288. Eight. You can also hear us online, by the way, at wezs.com. And we're on 1350 AM for those of you who still peruse AM radio on occasion. I know that's a very seldom used band uh, these days, but it's still out there. So, Mark. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Jane, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I think this is your first appearance on Common Sense. I think it is. Uh, welcome to uh, Laconia. Welcome to Common Sense. Thank you very much. Let me give the uh, listeners uh, a little refresher. Okay. Um, you were a state rep up from Alton uh, a few sessions back. Mm -hmm. um, you've uh, been politically active. Um, you're a music teacher at uh, uh, Chire School down in Manchester. Indeed. And uh, you have some opinions that you'd like to share with us this morning. Um, oh, just a few. <coughs> just a few. Yes. Where well, would you like to begin? Oh, my goodness. That's like, drop me into the ocean. Where do I begin? <laughs> well, I mean, we're here for Citizens for Belknap. That's always a good start, right? Um, oh. I was uh, really repulsed when I read an article this week um, in a New Hampshire periodical that um, this group, Citizens for Belknap, was springing up. And uh, on looking into that group, it was pretty apparent that they were well, well organized and funded and not the typical little grassroots, let's do the right thing group that they were purporting to be. Uh, and so when I started reading, I was like, holy moly. It was, it was clear that this was a, a leftist group that was putting out disinformation with regard to what they were all about, which wasn't trying to assist the citizen in Belknap County, and it wasn't to try to uh, you know, help the Republicans get on the right side of the issues. It was to help, I think, push a campaign uh, to promote you know, going against the conservative, the so very conservative attack, delegation. It's an attack group. It is a very good attack group. Their, their, their speak in their documents is clever, well thought, hard to decipher what they're really all about, which is being in the back background for these past years, I've been watching and reading a lot. And in the past few years, the left has really, really gotten so good at hiding, effectively hiding what they are doing. In the past, when I was in office, in 11, 12-ish time, you could figure it out pretty easily. If you read, you could read it and you go, ah, okay. But now they have sort of become so wordsmithy that you can't tell what they're about because they don't give it away. But you can how they set it up, right? How yeah. they set up the message. They have definitely uh, gone further down the path of what I've been preaching for a while now, redefining our common language yes. against us. Indeed. So what seems to be normal usage is not. Yeah. So the uh, uh, the political excuse me, the political committee registration mm -hmm. um, that they are organized under um, Citizens a, for Belknap? Yeah. Uh, it's available. Um, it's out there. And it says they, the purpose of the committee is to support and or oppose issues, causes, and candidates that impact Belknap County. Hmm. Uh, where have they started with their opposition? It so it's, uh, uh, seems to be based on the article that they're against rather than for. Um, I didn't notice anything in there that they were in favor of other than they're in favor of uh, attacking anyone who has a conservative opinion. Well, yeah, but see, this is the wordsmithing, right? Those extremists, right? Uh, if you're really conservative, 
you know, and you really believe in it, and you're really going to do the right thing for the taxpayer, if you're a sitting rep, uh, you're an extremist, yes. right? That's the, the message. The only acceptable people would be progressives yeah. and rhinos. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that this is stemming not so much out of politics, but out of spite. Uh -huh. This goes back to when the Gunstock Area Commission, the five commissioners who oversee the running of Gunstock, Gunstock Mountain Resort, well, one had to leave because he moved out of the county, one overstayed his welcome, became a squatter, that would be Rusty McClare. Uh, Brian Gallagher was the earlier one, who's mm -hmm. also on this pack. The treasurer. Treasurer, yes. Um, overstayed his term and had to be kicked off by the delegation. And the people who were being brought in uh, were conservatives, voted in by a conservatarian type of, uh, of the state reps. I want to stop and, you for a second. I'm just curious because I've seen some signs uh, uh, coming down Route 11. Uh, I saw some signs that said extremists, gunstock. Is, yep. is that against <laughs> our, our uh, dog and... Uh, that is, and what has happened is that Gary Kaidash, who was a commissioner, then was vice chair, and then acting chair, has seen his power base dissipate on the commission, and he's really, really upset. There is all uh, that's where Bob Guida came in when they when he and Tim Lang tried to put in legislation to totally restructure Gunstock after it's been operating just fine and dandy for 60, 70 years, so that it would become direct democracy, something progressives actually like, mm -hmm. instead of a representative. Well, you, it's easy to, to get a mob all riled up. Right. And direct Gary democracy King. is mob rule, essentially. Absolutely. Right. And Gary Kaidash is really flipping mad. He's a very rich, well-off person, and he is not happy that a bunch of what he considers conservative and libertarian rubes who believe in limited government following the law have taken away his political play toy. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like it that his toy box got emptied. Yeah. And this is the result of that. I, I believe that's, that's the true. root cause. Absolutely. Well, well, let's, let's back up a little bit because I think we might, we might in our haste to uh, castigate uh, a group that uh, we perceive to be uh, opposed to conservative uh, positions, uh, we might brush by the fact that uh, the Gunstock Area Commission, by statute, is appointed by the delegation. Correct. So, uh, whomever serves on the, the commission serves uh, by direction from the delegation. Mm -hmm. So whether Gunstock does well or gun, whether Gunstock does poorly, um, it reflects back on the delegation. The, the conservatives that uh, are being uh, attacked are the ones who put in place the commission that turned Gunstock around. It wasn't so many years ago that Gunstock was problematic for the county financially. Uh, Gunstock borrows money, when it borrows money, at the, uh, uh, the risk of the Belknap County taxpayers. So it's very important to understand why the delegation needs to have a hand in the appointment of the Gunstock commissioners. It is to protect the interests of the Belknap County uh, taxpayers. So, in the last few years, uh, Commissioner Kaidash has done a very good job turning the ship around. He has been a big part in uh, selection of uh, a change at the top of the gunstock management and Gunstock has become a very profitable ski area. So we need to say thank you for the change in financial standing and recognize that that goes back to the commission. They are the ones who, who oversee the, the area directly, but it reflects back to the selection capacity of the delegation. So this is some this is something that the 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 county 
needs to understand there is a, a change that has come about that has made us more secure as a, as a county and reduced our exposure to financial uh, risk. Uh, so there's a very positive thing here that has happened and everybody should be able to find a way to shake hands and resolve their differences without a spat. Okay, I have a question then. Because it, I, I think I'm about to tie this together, but I could be wrong. That's why I'm going to ask. Who is the gentleman you were talking about before with the money? I forget his name. Uh, Mr. Kydash, is, as well is, as Rusty McClare. Are they running Citizens for Belknap? I, we have not been able it's to not, it not yet, that, only, that, only because their names are not on the registration. That plug and socket can't be connected yet? we have not seen the donor list. Right. Okay, because that's the, what it sounds files. like. It, it does, and I will tell you, I'm fairly new to watching over this, but as you gentlemen know, um, I've been doing politics here in New Hampshire for a long time. Yep. We're starting our 17th year at Granicroft, and having gone through most of the years of the minutes, gone through all of the unredacted legal billing records, Gary Kydash has used uh, essentially the, the resort's money to the tune of about $110,000 with no oversight, you know, who's watching the watcher, going at, using legal assistance to go after newly appointed or about to be appointed commissioners. Yes, Mark, you're right, they have done a good turnaround, but I will tell you, and I have it on video, they continue to insist that they are a company. They're not. They're just a government agency that makes snow. They, <laughs> they are supposed to follow all the regular regulations of any department that is a subdivision of the state. And they've been playing footloose and fancy free by disregarding things. And the nexus point here is that the new commissioners that have been coming on, Board Peter Ness, Jade Wood, Doug Lambert, Dave Strang, have said, we will follow the law. And that has ruffled a whole lot of feathers. Okay, I'm going to uh, jump in here and we're going to take our first break. We will be right back. Clock TV.